think a lot of people may not realise what is present in the bay surrounding them. And with so many people using Dublin Bay, them having the ability to see this wildlife right in front of them is incredible without having to travel anywhere. It's right there on their doorstep. The Dublin Bay Birds Project uh, was set up to gather data about the water birds in Dublin Bay. Dublin Bay has two SPAs, they're special protection areas. They're designated under the EU Birds Directive, so it's quite a high level of protection. The two special protection areas cover the whole of the bay, stretching from Sutton all the way around to, to the West Pier in Dunleary. And considering Dublin Bay is such an, an important site, not just in terms of Dublin, but in terms of the whole country, uh, we felt that it would be really good to address the data gaps that we had noticed. So we approached Dublin Port once we had designed what we would like to see happening uh, in the Bay to address some of these data gaps. We now understand more about Dublin Bay than ever before. And with this long-term environmental monitoring of the birds and their habits within the Bay itself, we then get a better understanding when we move forward with our master plan and looking at what things that we can do that would facilitate both the environment and our own organisation. There's loads and loads of birds within the port area itself. We have red shank, so-called for the vividly red legs, and they sort of run around in the water looking for small invertebrates to feed on, and um, they've arrived here from Iceland to spend the winter here. Another bird we've seen the last few days, curlew, but their birds have come from um, further north, Scandinavia, even further east than that, and they'll breed um, in those areas, but they spend the winter here. We know quite a lot about oyster catchers in Dublin Bay. We've been tagging them for the last um, five years. A large bird, they're black and white, and um, they've got a huge, some people call them carrot bills because they've got a huge orange bill. And they'll probe the sand in the mud looking for stuff like ragworms, uh, small mollusks, mussels and stuff. Within Dublin, a really unusual thing is that the Brenkies have habituated to living quite close to humans and using human-made habitats. Places like the grassland fields, the, 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 the hurling pitches, the rugby pitches, the parks, all those places to feed. So it's one of the only places on the globe we see a wild goose um, habituate and get so close to humans. And it's a really good opportunity for us to study them. The industrial working parts of the port have, um, they support small numbers of the geese. Um, have habituated to feeding on some of the, the spilt food material, grain and stuff from the lorries that are loaded from the boats into the lorries there. So certain individuals, groups of up to sort of 200 birds gather there on the, on the actual dock surfaces and the, 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 the river wall and feed there quite sort of um, happily between the traffic and the cranes and everything, which is really, really rare. Um, yeah, so they're, they're, they're quite special. Tagging birds or colouring birds or ringing birds is basically where you catch a bird and you target a specific species of bird, you catch them and they each get a metal ring, they're called rings, they're just closed um, rings and each of those have an inscription where we can identify that individual bird. We're learning lots and lots um, about the birds uh, within Dublin Bay and outside from those colour rings. The volunteer element in the project is hugely important. Um, it's, we term it as citizen science because the information, even though they're not necessarily professional scientists, the information that they submit to us as members of the public is hugely beneficial and of huge value. In terms of human health and well-being, I think the existence of nature and wildlife in the Bay is so important. I think it would be really great if more people were aware of what Dublin Bay supported in terms of its wildlife. And by having nature there as a kind of like an attraction and such a variety of nature within Dublin Bay, um, it's, it's very important to everybody that we protect this for our future generations to go out and, 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 and see and be involved with.